Good morning, friends. It is early and we have a fun and busy day we are gonna spend in the kitchen. We're gonna do some cooking to prep for this weekend because I am having that garlic peeling party finally this weekend and I need to do some prep for it. We also have some birthdays this weekend that I'm cooking for. So between prep for the garlic peeling party and prep for the birthdays that I'm cooking for, we're gonna spend some time today in the kitchen to help make this weekend go a little bit easier. But first, I'm getting a freezer meal out. This is some meatloaf. We're not only going to do some dessert prep for this coming weekend, we are also gonna be doing some food preservation today because these peppers that we put in the dehydrator are ready to be processed. We put those in the dehydrator right before we left for the Homesteaders of America conference. And so I'm excited to do that. And we're also going to change the oil on the freeze dryer. I've watched the same video on it four times. It looks very straightforward. I just wanna be really careful and make sure I do it correctly because that is a massive investment and I don't wanna mess it up. We're also gonna be putting some ginger and turmeric we grew together from the garden in there today, hopefully. But first we need coffee. I already brewed a pot of coffee, but I want to make some coffee creamer, some pumpkin coffee creamer with this pumpkin that we processed the other day together. We first though, before we can make our pumpkin creamer, we need to make some pumpkin spice blend because I'm completely out of that. With this pumpkin, we're also going to be making a pumpkin roll. We're not gonna do the pumpkin roll today. We're gonna do that tomorrow together, but we're gonna make a banana cake today. But we need the pumpkin spice blend so we can make our pumpkin creamer and we can make our pumpkin roll coming up. So we need to get out our spices. So we need clove, allspice, ginger, cinnamon, and nutmeg. All these recipes will be linked down in the description box that we're gonna be using today along with the spice blend. We're gonna start with six tablespoons of cinnamon, four teaspoons of ginger, which is a tablespoon plus a teaspoon, three teaspoons of allspice, which is a tablespoon, three teaspoons of clove, and four teaspoons of nutmeg. Nutmeg is one of these spices that if you can buy it whole and grind it yourself, it's gonna taste a whole lot better. I love nutmeg, it's one of my favorite spices. So then all you have to do is put the lid on and shake it and you have your own pumpkin pie spice. This saves a ton of money and I like to use this all fall and Christmas and it's just convenient, has all your spices mixed in instead of having to get everything out every time you're making a recipe, you just use this instead. All right, so now let's make our pumpkin creamer so we can get some coffee and we can get this day going. So let me put all these spices away. With tonight's dinner, we are also gonna make those viral Parmesan half cut mashed potatoes, not mashed potatoes, baked potatoes. I have seen this recipe go around online and normally when I make meatloaf, which is what the freezer meal I took out of the oven is, I make mashed potatoes, but we just had those two weeks ago and we don't eat a ton of mashed potatoes. So I wanted to try to mix it up and I thought that this would be the perfect time to go ahead and try that viral recipe. So we're gonna get those going early in the day. I just put a tablespoon of our pumpkin pie spice in the bottom of our pot and it's hot. I'm just gonna toast them for just 10, 15 seconds, 30 seconds. Oh my goodness, until I can smell it, it smells beautiful. Normally when I make my pumpkin creamer, I use half and I use milk and heavy cream. I don't have that, but I have half and half, which is basically the same thing. So we're gonna add two cups of that. And then we're gonna let this just kind of steep together for a little bit. We're also gonna add a quarter cup of maple syrup. You could add anywhere from a quarter cup to a half cup, whatever you want. I don't like it super sweet. I probably only put two or three tablespoons in there. And then we're gonna put a quarter cup of our pumpkin. 
And I have not blended this pumpkin yet, so I think I need to get the immersion blender and actually, well, we're gonna strain it actually, so never mind. So we're gonna mix this up and we're gonna let this just warm up and all the flavors to meld together. I should have blended my pumpkin up before I put it in here, but that's okay. I did decide to go ahead and double my pumpkin spice recipe so that I could have enough to get through the entire fall and winter season. I love to use this in if I make baked oatmeal or make crisps or anything that you would use cinnamon. I most of the time use pumpkin pie spice because it just has a little bit more flavor than just plain cinnamon. So we're gonna let this just steep for a little bit. I do have the stove on and then we'll come back to it in just a minute. I almost forgot to add a good healthy pinch of salt, maybe two pinches. Now I'm gonna do a step that if you're using canned pumpkin, you can go ahead and skip this, but I used fresh pumpkin that I roasted and I hadn't blended it yet. And it can be kind of stringy and you don't really want that in your creamer. So I have my immersion blender out and I'm gonna blend this. That looks so much better. I wish you could smell this. It smells so good in here. Woo, it smells so good in here. So good. And I already unloaded the dishwasher so I can put my dirty dishes right into the dishwasher this morning. Now what I like to do is strain my pumpkin creamer so that there's no chunks or anything in it. You can skip this step, but I like to make sure I have a really smooth coffee creamer. So here you can see that this is kind of the thick stuff we strained off and like I said, you don't have to do that, but I like a really creamy creamer. And we got a little over a pint. Now it's time to pour us a cup of coffee and give it a taste test. And then we're gonna get going on our banana cake. So banana cake is my mom's absolute favorite cake. And Josh's grandma has the absolute best banana bread recipe. She gave me a box of all not all, but a ton of her handwritten recipe cards, which I treasure. And I actually spent half the afternoon yesterday typing these up and putting them on the website. But I thought, I mean, let's be honest with ourselves. <laughs> banana quick bread is basically banana cake without frosting. And we're gonna make a cream cheese frosting to put on this. And because this is the best banana bread recipe I've ever had, we're gonna try to turn her banana bread into banana cake for my mom. But we need to try our coffee creamer and it's nice and warm, which is awesome. Oh my goodness, look at that friends, it's so beautiful. Cheers. It's gonna be super hot. You can have no guilt having this pumpkin coffee creamer because there's no weird colors or flavors or anything like that. It's perfectly sweet, not too sweet, but just has a hint, delicious. So I'm gonna let these creamers cool for just a little bit and then we'll pop them in the fridge. So I wanted to show you her handwritten recipe cards here. And this is what we're gonna make this pumpkin roll. She actually had it written twice. When I was typing up these recipes, I saw this and I thought for the garlic peeling party, and the fact that I just peeled or roasted a bunch of pumpkin, we should make Josh's grandma's pumpkin roll recipe. I've never made a pumpkin roll before, so that's gonna be fun. But the recipe we're gonna make right now is this banana bread recipe. I will have this typed up on the website for you. And the directions say 350, one hour. There's no other directions. So I was telling Josh yesterday, this is like a Great British Bake Off technical challenge. You've got a list of ingredients and no directions, but you know, most of us have made a quick bread before. We can just kind of follow the same formula that we usually do. And then we are gonna make cream cheese frosting for both the pumpkin roll and the banana bread, but we're not gonna do that today. Let's get to it. Before we can get going on the banana cake recipe, we need to do some grocery shopping downstairs because I am out of neutral flavored oil for the recipe. Plus we need potatoes for our recipe tonight. And when I look online, or when I watch those videos, these are about the size potatoes they use. So we're gonna get a couple different kinds of potatoes. We've got, these are huckleberry, a red potato, these are butterball. So we're just gonna grab a few. 
I want to try to get mostly the same size potatoes so they cook evenly. That's probably enough potatoes. And here I'm going to grab some avocado oil for our cake. And the last thing I'm going to grab is some ketchup that we just made this year. We are going to use our ketchup for the first time today. And I also need some garlic. And thankfully, this weekend, we're going to be dealing with these 500 heads of garlic. And I'm really excited about that. So one thing I've been contemplating, and I'm not sure when it comes to this banana cake recipe, what I should do, or banana bread recipe. This banana bread recipe makes one loaf. And I want to make a sheet cake. My mom prefers that over a layered cake. I asked her what her preference was. And I don't know if I should triple this recipe or if I should just double it. I don't know. Maybe what I'll do is we'll triple the recipe and we'll fill up our nine by 13 cake pan. And if we have extra, I can make muffins or something because I wouldn't want the cake to be too thin, if that makes sense. Well, no, because we would add four cups of flour, four eggs, three cups of sugar, I think those ingredients will add up if we just double it enough to be in a nine by 13. And if it's not, then maybe I'll make another batch. So let's get going on this banana bread recipe. You can do this in a mixer, but I'm just gonna do it in a bowl today. We'll use our Danish whisk. We need six and a half bananas. Sorry, we need seven bananas, which I only have six, but I have some that are frozen, so I can add those. I would probably like these bananas to be a little bit more, ooh, this is weird. This banana is no good. I'm gonna have to get some frozen bananas out. Bananas freeze beautifully, so I always, always, always have frozen bananas in my freezer if I can find them. I know they're in here somewhere. Here they are. About four pieces is one banana. That's how I generally break it up in my freezer bags. So that's three bananas. I'm gonna microwave this for just a minute. When you use frozen bananas, they do have some liquid that kind of seeps out of them. I did drain that off. I'm just gonna take a second and I'm gonna mash these bananas up really, really well. I have the bananas all mashed up really nicely. So we're gonna start adding the rest of the ingredients. The one thing I am changing from the recipe is that Josh's grandma calls for Crisco and I don't keep that in my house. So that is why I needed to go downstairs and get some avocado oil. We're just gonna use a neutral flavored oil. You could use canola oil or vegetable oil if you wanted, or you could go ahead and use the Crisco. So we need one cup of that. We need three cups of white sugar. And this right here is why I say that most quick breads like zucchini bread, pumpkin bread, banana bread recipes are basically just cake without frosting because they have a lot of sugar in them. But this recipe is so good. So we have three cups of that and then we need to add four eggs. I just collected a bunch of eggs here. Today is Thursday and we are celebrating my mom's birthday on Sunday. We're also celebrating my nephew's birthday on Sunday. But because I have this big garlic party that I'm hosting at my house on Saturday, I wanted to get a couple of the things that I'm responsible for this party on Sunday done. So we're gonna get this cake made and then I'm gonna throw it in the freezer. And because I'm making a pumpkin roll for Saturday for the garlic party, and we need cream cheese frosting for that recipe and this recipe, then I'll pull this cake out of the freezer. I'll make the cream cheese frosting for both recipes and then I'll frost this cake then. So just trying to prep a little bit today so that this weekend isn't super, super crazy. And we're gonna add some vanilla. We're gonna stir this together. Along with 10 tablespoons of milk. And this is doubling this recipe. I think this will be enough batter to fill a 9 by 13 baking dish. 
Now we're gonna add the last few ingredients. We're gonna add four cups of flour. This is just plain all-purpose flour. Two teaspoons of baking soda. And in the move, I think I lost my teaspoon because I can't find it, so this is a half teaspoon. I'm gonna put it in my hand so I can break up any lumps. There's one there. And then I'm just gonna stir that in with the flour a little bit. Then we're gonna add two teaspoons of salt. And that is our recipe. I'm glad I didn't triple this recipe. I think we have enough batter to fill a nine by 13. I am gonna spray this nine by 13 with some avocado spray. The last thing I would want is for our cake to stick. I have my oven preheating to 350 degrees. This is too much batter for a nine by 13. I'm trying to remember to use this oven for when I'm doing baking because it's an electric oven versus my stove oven is propane and apparently electric ovens are supposed to do better even baking when it comes to things like cakes and cupcakes and stuff like that. So we got it in there. Now let's start on the potatoes. We're gonna leave the skins on these potatoes so we need to give them a really good scrub. There is a couple different ways I've seen this recipe being made online. One of them, you cut the potato in half and you cook it in the oven from a raw state. And the other way is you pre-cook the potatoes by blanching them first. So we are gonna do that method. I'm gonna scrub these really well because we're keeping the skins on. And they do have dirt on them. I wanna do the blanch method because we're gonna be making a buttery, garlicky, parmesan, cheesy, crusty bottom. And I just have a feeling that that crusty bottom is gonna get overcooked before the potatoes are fully soft. So, so we're gonna go with the pre-cooked method today. So let me get these all scrubbed. Some of them might have a little, small little blemish on them. So we'll just cut that off and make sure that our potatoes are nice and beautiful. And then if there's like a piece of root or something on it, we'll take that off as well. But overall, these potatoes are really, really pretty. We've gone through all the potatoes that needed to be used up first. I'm gonna fill this with cold water. We're not looking at cooking these until they're soft enough to mash. We only wanna cook them about halfway through. So while these are cooking, we can get going on the bottom layer where this is the key to this recipe, I think. One of the reasons I want to get dinner going early this morning is because we are meeting with our landscaper this afternoon. We have our first meeting where we're going to start planning the garden. And I am so excited about that. And I want dinner completely taken care of. We're also going to go ahead and I'm going to prep the veggie for tonight's dinner as well. We're going to have some roasted cauliflower, but I got my cutting board out here so we can make the Parmesan garlicky bottom part of these potatoes. Now the recipe does call for fresh parsley or chives, and I don't have either of those. I'm not going to run to the store just for that. I've got some dehydrated we can use. I need to run to the store tomorrow to get a couple ingredients for the garlic peeling party. I'm peeling some garlic right now and I am so excited to have some family come over and they're gonna help me peel all that garlic. I have a whole dinner party planned with some really yummy food. We're gonna cook all that food together. So for all their hard work of helping me peel garlic, they'll enjoy a really nice dinner. And then I'm gonna turn all that processed garlic into different products. We'll do some dehydrated, some confit garlic, some fermented garlic, infused oil, and I will gift everybody that came to help peel garlic some of those goodies. They'll get a little bit of the product, but I'll do that after they leave. But for their effort they put into helping me, they'll get to reap some of that benefit. I'm excited. I think that's what you know this whole thing is about. It's about building community and just enjoying being together, enjoying good food and sharing the fruits of your labor with loved ones. So I'm gonna peel this whole head of garlic since I have it out. 
we'll chop it up. I won't use the whole thing, but we'll just get it prepped and then I'll, I know I'll use it for other recipes. We have some Parmesan cheese. We're gonna grate up. So in a baking dish, I put some butter and then we're gonna put a little bit of olive oil. That's what it said to do to mix the two. We're gonna add our Parmesan cheese, quite a bit of our garlic, but not all of it. I think I'm gonna put the rest of that garlic on the cauliflower. And then we need to season this with pepper, salt, and a touch of paprika, mostly just for color, I think. Then we're gonna mix all these ingredients together. Because there's so much cheese and things in this, I'm going to lay it flat like this. But because of the cheese, this is why I feel like if you didn't pre-cook your potatoes, this cheese would just burn before the potatoes are fully cooked and crispy. Because when you look at those <laughs> viral TikToks and reels, those potatoes are so super crispy. And I just can't imagine that in the time it would take for those potatoes to get crispy, this bottom mixture wouldn't be completely burned. So we're just gonna set this here for now and we'll get going on our cauliflower. We have not had cauliflower or broccoli in a really long time fresh because we've had so much garden produce coming in and I didn't grow really any cauliflower to speak of and I didn't grow any broccoli at all. So I'm excited to have some roasted veggies again. We love our cauliflower and our broccoli roasted. I just cut out the core. We'll give that to the chickens. These were really small cauliflowers, so we're gonna cook both of them. I'm gonna cut these into florets and then I'll wash them. If you cut the core out like that, then you can kind of just break it into the florets. They're a little bit big, I'll cut them in half, but most of them don't really need to because they're, they're kind of small to begin with. Our potatoes are boiling away. I wanna check them and see how done they are. Oh no, they're still rock solid. We're gonna give those probably another 10 minutes or so. Compost bowl. So to roast vegetables, if you wanna prep your vegetables before you're gonna roast them, you can put your seasonings on except for the salt. The salt will draw out the moisture and they'll get soggy. So you can put your oil, your garlic, your pepper and whatever other seasonings you want. Just leave the salt off until right before you put it in the oven. I'm gonna put this in the fridge and now our dinner is basically done. All we have to do is cut the potatoes in half and bake them and bake this and bake our meatloaf and we have dinner. If I can find a place to put this in here. I have over seven dozen eggs in my refrigerator right now. So that is another thing that people are all gonna go home with when they help me peel garlic is everyone is gonna be able to take a dozen eggs home. Nine chickens for two people is way too many chickens. But the cool thing about it is I can enlist the help of people to help me do different things, and then I can share my abundance with them. And everyone, well not everyone, but most people are pretty excited to receive some farm fresh eggs. I had to get a drink of coffee. Banana bread has been in the oven for about 45 minutes. I did put a piece of foil on it because it looked like it was getting a little yeah, dark and it's not done in the center. So I wanted to cover it. I'm thinking that I probably shouldn't have filled this nine by 13 so full. So it's just a learning thing, <laughs> trying to adapt a loaf recipe into a cake recipe. All right, let's see. Let's go ahead and check on our potatoes. So to finish this recipe, it's super simple. We're gonna cut our par-cooked potatoes in half, and we're gonna lay them cut side down on the cheese. I hope this 
pan is big enough to fit all of our potatoes. Our cake has been in the oven for one hour now and it's still not done. It's done on the outside here, but there's still way too much jiggle. So foil back on, we're going to let that cook. Well, I cooked too many potatoes. <laughs> we have that many in our pan and I cooked this many. So I will turn this into a breakfast hash or something later this weekend so we can enjoy that. So I'm just gonna set this aside and we will bake that when it's closer to dinner. Oh, I did want to finish that off actually. So I didn't salt or pepper the potatoes or anything when they were in the water. So what I'm gonna do to help them crisp up a little bit in the oven when we cook them, so I'm just gonna put a little bit of avocado spray and then we need to season the actual potato themselves. So we're gonna put a little bit of pepper on the top and a little bit of salt and that way both sides of the potatoes are now seasoned. I still have some pre-cooked bacon that we cooked together and so I think what we'll do is we'll have a potato bacon scramble hash sometime this weekend. That'll be good. I think I'm stalling putting off changing the oil on the freeze dryer because I'm nervous about it. So in that, oh, I can smell this. Mm. I'm gonna give it another couple minutes. I think the outside might end up getting a little overcooked to help make sure the inside is cooked. Let me get a fork, I'm gonna get a fork. Usually when something is done in the oven, it's when I can smell it. It's been in there for an hour and 10 minutes now. I gotta give it a couple more minutes. So because I'm stalling, we're gonna go ahead and take care of these two dehydrated things real quick. These are, they're not cayenne peppers. What are they? What kind of pepper are these? They are, Serranos, they're red serrano peppers. And I'm gonna gift these to a couple people for Christmas because they love spicy powder. They're not huge fans of a vinegary based hot sauce, which is what I made a ton of that I'm gonna gift to a lot of people too. But because I know that this individual doesn't prefer the vinegar flavor, he prefers a powder, this is gonna be for him. So I'm just putting this in my food processor. I'm not looking to turn this into a powder. That's why I'm using my food processor, not my blender. And we're just gonna pulse this. Wow, this is strong stuff. It smells so good though. It's definitely got some heat to it, but there's a sweet smell to it that's fantastic. So that didn't make that much. I probably will end up putting this in a little jar and that will be a really nice gift for someone this Christmas. Now this is our Sugar Rush Peach Pulp and I thought that this would be really good powdered up as well. The Sugar Rush Peach Hot Sauce is by far my favorite hot sauce that I have ever made. It's got a good amount of heat to it, but it's also got a sweetness to it because there are peaches in it. And those sugar rush peaches, I wouldn't say they're sweet, but when you first taste them, they're sweet and then they're spicy. I can link those peppers, those seeds down in the description box if you're interested in growing your own sugar rush peach peppers. I'm gonna attempt to grow them again this next year and hopefully we get a good harvest like we did this year. So we're just gonna blend this up and I think that this would be really good added to so many different dishes, Mexican dishes, Thai dishes, anything where you want a little bit of heat and a little bit of sweet. I think I'm gonna be able to put these red pepper flakes in this four ounce jar. 
Oh yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so that's gonna be a Christmas gift right there. And then in this jar, I'm gonna put our sugar rush peach pulp powder. Oh my goodness, this smells so good. And things like this, these dry good applications are the perfect use for reusing canning lids, ones that you've already canned. Beautiful. I think it is time to take this cake out of the oven. It smells divine. I think probably one and a half this recipe for a nine by 13 would probably be the perfect amount. I think that's done, I hope that's done. It might be a little overcooked around the outside, but I want it to be cooked on the inside. All right, time to clean up my pepper mess and then out to go change the oil on that freeze dryer. We're gonna let this cool completely. All right, clean up my mess and out to the freeze dryer to get the oil changed on this freeze dryer. And I rewatched the video again. This looks so easy. I am intimidated by it because this is such a big investment. I don't wanna mess it up, but I think we can do it. So if you're interested in a freeze dryer, I can link the one I have down below. I have the Premier Pump. This is the first time I've had to change the oil and I've had it for over a year and I've used it a ton. So you take this piece off. You can reuse this oil. It comes with this, it's kind of like a Brita filter, but it takes five hours-ish for it to filter through. So I'm gonna put new oil in it. And all we have to do, apparently, is turn, I'll make sure that's underneath there, but turn this to open. Oh, ah! oh no, okay. I spilled a little bit of it, but we're good. I guess I didn't know where the hole was coming out. And there we go. We are emptying the oil. You can see that there's some cloudiness to it. They do make a freeze dryer pump that is oil free and you don't have to change the oil at all. That is definitely an upgrade. I did not get that one, but that would be a really nice one to have. I have a medium size freeze dryer if I were to invest in a freeze dryer again, I would get a large because if you're gonna use it, trust me, you're gonna use it and you might as well save those few extra pennies to get the large because it's not that much more from a medium to a large. You're already investing a ton. So I would get the large. It did say on the video that it is best, I'm gonna just tip it a little bit to get any of the last bit of oil out to do this right after you run your freeze dryer. But my freeze dryer says that the oil needs to be changed right now. And I don't know what would be better, if it'd be better to turn it on and have it run when it says it needs an oil change or not. So we're just gonna do it cold because it said you could do it either way. But next time I see the, the, cause it tells you when it needs one, when it's done with the cycle, I will go ahead and just redo it. But I hadn't watched the video, I was intimidated. So I just figured, I would wait. But so far, this is really easy. So I am not getting any more oil out of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it back on the closed and then we're gonna fill it back up. There's this little gauge here and you wanna fill the oil between the min and max. So we're gonna fill it to about right here. I just have their oil that came with the freeze dryer. I'm gonna close this just so I don't spill this. And then I have a funnel and it's said to do it pretty slowly because this sometimes takes a second to catch up with how much oil you've put in. And the oil that's going in is completely clear. We are done. That was incredibly easy. That's all it took. I was so intimidated by that. Oh, okay. So, okay. I have a different model than the one I was watching on YouTube. There's this O-ring right here that's actually attached to my pump versus the video I watched on YouTube. The O-ring was on this piece, so you needed to check it. But mine, I don't need to check. They did say 
that you want to be very careful when you screw this back on to make sure that you're screwing it on and it's nice and level, which we have it there. Have that closed. I was so intimidated by this and <laughs> you saw that. That took me 30 seconds. Could not have been easier. And that's on, we're done. You can reuse this oil. The video I watched, it said that it takes about five hours for it to filter. And I wanted to just get new oil in it. So I'm gonna let this filter and then I will put it in a, probably back in this because this is basically almost empty. I'll Sharpie on it the date that I did it and that it's been used one time. And then I can reuse that oil once it filters. I did make an oil stain on this carpet, which is okay because we're gonna eventually rip out all this carpet and finish this room. This room is an unfinished room. But now I know if I do this again, I will put a cookie sheet or something underneath it and then I know I need to push my pump out farther because I know where the oil actually comes out of the pump. But that was so easy. I'm sure, because it's still telling me I need to change the oil. So there's probably, I'm gonna have Josh look at this tonight and he will probably, um, there's probably something in here that you have to say, nope, I changed the oil, restart the counting. But the oil does come out, let me show you the color, pretty discolored from the freeze dryer. And the oil that, put this here so we don't spill it. I'm just, that's a perfect spot for it. And the oil that I put into it is completely clear. So I'm curious to see when it filters through if it's going to be clear at the bottom there. But that's going to take a while. I'm so glad we finally just went ahead and bit the bullet and did that because that was so easy. Don't be intimidated. It is quite an upgrade to go from the Premier Pump, the one I have, to the one that's oil free. And with how easy that was, I think it's worth it. You only have to do it, I only have had to do it once and I've had it for over a year. Obviously the more you use it, the more you'd have to do it, but it was so easy. We're gonna let this banana cake cool completely and then I'm gonna wrap it up in saran wrap a couple times, throw it in the freezer and we'll take it out of the freezer early Sunday morning for the birthday party. I am done in the kitchen until we need to actually pull together dinner. And I've got a few hours before our meeting with our landscaper. So I'm gonna relax for a little bit and then we'll be back. Maybe, maybe I'll do the dishes. I need to run the dishwasher. So maybe I'll get some of these dirty dishes in the dishwasher. I'll go sit down, relax for a few hours and then we'll be back to finish up dinner. The dogs are always willing to check out the dishwasher. It drives Josh crazy. It doesn't bother me at all. I don't care if they check out what's going on in the dishwasher, but he does not like it. I'm gonna try to get this as full as possible and then we'll run it and then I can unload it later. I basically had this thing completely full. Yep, I gotta turn it on. I got the kitchen cleaned up and now everything is ready for dinner. I'm gonna relax for a few hours and then we'll pull dinner together. All right, we just spent two hours with the landscaper. Super exciting. I'm really excited about what this next year holds for us. And we went over all the things, the long-term goals, the short-term goals, just really, it's gonna be super fun to see this whole thing come together. So I just preheated the oven to 400 degrees because we're gonna get dinner in the oven now. This is our meatloaf that we did, we made together on a freezer meal. And I'm just gonna pour a little bit of our homemade ketchup on here. This is the first time I'm using the homemade ketchup. Normally I make a sauce with some brown sugar and mustard and Worcestershire and some sriracha to put on my meatloaf, but it's getting late and I think just ketchup on it is gonna be just fine. It's gonna be more than fine, it's gonna be delicious. Meatloaf is one of those classic, oh shoot, my cast iron is always in, getting in the way of me being able to put something in the oven. I should probably stop storing it in there, but it's just so convenient because this is a huge cast iron. This is not an average size cast iron. But meatloaf is one of those things that's like a classic American dish, but 
we did not eat it growing up because I don't know if my mom or dad doesn't like it or something, but it's one of our favorites. Josh and I love meatloaf. It's so good. And now what we need to do is we also still need to cook our cauliflower. So we're gonna get that out of the fridge. We need to season our cauliflower with some salt. I think I'm gonna go ahead and transfer our cauliflower into this cast iron since it's already hot and we'll bake our cauliflower in this. I should probably wait for this oven to preheat, but I'm just gonna throw this in the oven. 400 degrees until it's nice and toasty. Now, dinner is in the oven because we prepped it so much earlier in the day. All I had to do was throw it in the oven. Probably is gonna be 30 to 40 minutes before we eat, but it was ready for me when I was ready for it. You know what I just realized? The whole reason I wanted to change the oil on the freeze dryer was so that we could freeze dry the garlic, or not garlic, the ginger and turmeric we grew together so we could make some of that master tonic that I purchased when I was at Homesteaders of America, which I think really helped our head colds. We took a little bit of it every day, but I'm clearly not gonna do that now. It got too late, which is fine. So we'll just do that tomorrow, or maybe not. Maybe we'll do it next week. <laughs> I don't know, we'll get to it when we get to it. But now our freeze dryer is ready for us whenever we're ready to start freeze drying again. I just walked out of here for a few minutes to go change and get some comfy clothes on because I have been in jeans far too long today. And I come in the kitchen and it smells incredible in here. I'm just pouring myself a little cup of tea. It's definitely tea season again and I'm happy it's here. But that Parmesan potatoes, I think that's what it is, and the meatloaf, smells so good. So let's take a look. Okay, so those are a little greasy. They're supposed to get, nope. Okay, so those need to cook longer, I think. I followed one of the recipes that I found on Instagram. So <laughs> maybe those ones have a little too much oil and Parmesan cheese on them, but that's okay. I'm sure they'll still taste good. So these smell incredible, but I am gonna take some paper towel and kind of dab up some of this grease because they have quite a bit of grease that I don't really want to eat. If I make this again, I will not add the olive oil, just the butter. And look at the bottom. I don't think those are burned. I think that's just beautiful, cheesy, crispy goodness. Our cauliflower is done. Look at the color on that beauty. Roasted veggies are my favorite. So we already know we like the cauliflower and the meatloaf, but Josh just came in and he's gonna taste our potato. Oh, wow. So these are called, these are viral TikTok potatoes. Viral? Viral. Oh my goodness. TikTok? Yeah. Now I'm triggered. You're triggered? Yeah. Josh doesn't do social media. So it's coming up darker on camera. It's definitely not burnt, I don't think, but there's definitely some crispiness to it. So I'm gonna give this to Josh. Don't taste it yet, because I'm gonna taste it at the same time. It's gonna be super hot, so it needs to cool just a little bit. Look how crispy that is. I definitely, I had to get a bunch of grease off because there was some oil, and I just dabbed it with a paper towel, and now it looks like absolutely perfect. Ooh, there's a cheesy, so it's Parmesan cheese garlic crust. It looks pretty hot. <laughs> it's hot, yeah. Don't eat it till you can till you can actually taste it. <laughs> Alright, are you gonna are you gonna do it? I think it's still too hot. I'm just gonna do it. You're gonna do it? Okay. It's... Oh hot. It's really hot. <laughs> hot! <laughs> it's too hot to taste it. How is it so hot? <laughs> it's really good though. Mmm. Mmm. Don't really you can start chewing? I'm tasting it. Mm -hmm. Oh, we should put some ketchup on it. This is our homemade ketchup. That would be good. Okay. That's it's very, very savory, so I think a little bit of sweet with the ketchup is gonna be perfect. When I took these out of the oven, I was like, I'm never making these again. But I think with that tweak of not adding the olive oil, I think I would make these again. That's really good. Mm -hmm. This ketchup is awesome. It's the first time you've tasted ketchup, isn't it? Mm-hmm. That's good. Really good. Yeah, I'll eat more of those for sure. Well, good, because there is more. Friend, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to spend time with me in my kitchen. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you are new, please consider subscribing and coming back for tomorrow's video. 
because we are gonna spend the day in the kitchen again tomorrow. We need to go out grocery shopping. We're going to make a really yummy salad. We're gonna make a pumpkin roll, 40 garlic chicken, and a bunch of other things. So if you enjoyed this, I'd greatly appreciate a thumbs up. I will post a couple of videos here. You can go enjoy between now and my next upload, and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye, friend.